Come for the cocktail, stay for the camera lesson. This is Cocktail Camera. What's up everyone, I'm Jordan, and today we just made a martini, specifically a five to one martini. So that's five parts gin to one part vermouth. I like a lemon twist as a garnish in mine versus an olive. I also put some orange bitters in there. Now, a martini is one of those classic cocktails that everyone has an opinion on. Everyone thinks their way of making it is the right way. So there's undoubtedly gonna be some people in my comments being like, oh, that's not how you make a martini. Bro, just chill out, cause it's whatever. A martini, one of those drinks, make it how you want to make it, but don't make it with vodka. Pretty sure a glass of water has more flavor than a vodka martini. Now with this channel, I usually show you how to make a cocktail and then how to photograph it beautifully. But for this video, it's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna photograph the process of making a martini, or really, any cocktail. This video is all about getting those crisp, perfect pour photos where you are pouring uh, a jigger of gin, vodka, whiskey, whatever, into a mixing glass, into a shaker, and getting it perfectly crisp in focus and freezing that motion. All right, so this is the set we are working with. I am once again both our bartender and photographer at the same time as I so often I am. Uh, I have my camera mounted on the salon stand over here, kind of down low looking up at our mixing glass where I will be pouring gin. And then I will be standing back here and then I have one light over to the side. Uh, this is a studio strobe with a power pack. Uh, I think that's like a 26 or 27 inch Octobox and I'm gonna put a big diffuser over that. Gonna bring this guy in. This is just like a big diffusion panel, semi-transparent. I forget the exact material I used for making this, but I will try to link to it in the description. Having a really big diffuser like this is super helpful when photographing glassware, bottles, liquid. It just really softens up the light a lot and helps it just wrap around your subject versus if you're using a strip box or soft box, you end up getting hot spots or these really hard highlights uh, reflected in the glass, which sometimes is a vibe if that's what you're going for. Other times it just appears a little too harsh. So something like this, this is just a metal frame that I taped this diffusion material to and have it mounted on a C-stand. This I basically always have up. I use it all the time. Now I'm all about using flash to freeze movement, especially when photographing bartenders or photographing myself making a cocktail like we are today. But flash just makes freezing movement so much easier. You don't have to have a super high shutter speed, but it makes things like capturing, you know, pouring liquid or capturing the zest shot, which I have a whole other tutorial on my channel about that. But it's these small moments or small details that aren't even you know, super easy to see in real life. You know, if you blink, you miss it sort of thing. But 
Flash allows you to freeze these little details and quick moments in a way that is super dynamic and engaging. And that's why I'm just such a huge fan of using Flash. If you haven't used off-camera Flash before, I get it, it can be pretty intimidating. It is kind of a lot of different things to keep in mind and different settings to balance out. But if you're interested in learning more about off-camera Flash, especially in applying it to food and beverage photography or restaurant and bar photography, Check out my e-courses, cocktailcamera.com. Would love to help you and teach you how to use this amazing tool. So for today though, we just have our flash set up on my camera. I'm going to set the exposure to crush out any ambient light. So what I mean by that, none of the natural light or I even have a video light off screen kind of lighting me, none of that's gonna show up in my photo if I take the flash out. So if I was to just click the shutter right now with my exposure settings, it's gonna be a completely black image. So that way, when I add in my flash, the only light in the exposure is from my flash. And again, that's gonna allow me to perfectly freeze motion. Now, photographing yourself can be a little tricky. I've gotten fairly good at it over the years. Uh, I do have a little remote uh, shutter situation, but I still set my camera on a 10 second timer with a three image burst. So that gives me a little more chances to get the shot. Let's see how that works. Looking at that first image, I wanna pour a little higher. That's just gonna allow me to see that liquid a little better. And it's a clean mixing glass, so I'm just gonna pour it back in and kinda pour it back and forth until I get a shot that I like. So here we go, we're gonna do 10 seconds again. Kinda get set, go a little higher above the mixing glass. So those shots are pretty cool. It really just comes down to timing. If you're a little bit early when you're pouring or a little bit late, you know, relative to when the shutter goes off, you might just capture a you know, slightly different movement. Uh, I would recommend setting your aperture on your lens to be not quite as wide. I think mine is at F5.6 or F7. This just gives you a wider focus area. If you have it too wide, your hand or the liquid will probably be out of focus. So a slightly closed down aperture will help you out. I also recommend pouring towards your light source. Uh, like here, I am kind of pouring backhanded uh, so that the light is hitting the liquid. When you pour kind of the opposite direction, it can still look cool, but it tends to be not quite as dramatic looking. Okay, maybe I lied because this shot looks really cool. So yeah, pour towards your light source, but also pour away from it and see what happens. You can also experiment with moving your light source a little closer to your subjects, uh, putting it in slightly different angles. I always like backlighting my cocktails. I probably say that in every single one of my videos, uh, just to get that more dramatic lighting, but try different angles, different lighting modifiers, and just see what looks cool to you. All right, final shot. Let's throw some blue gin in there just for fun. So three takeaways for you. One is try and use off-camera flash when you're photographing motion. This just allows you to easily capture action or those little details like liquid and zest. It just helps you to make those little things really stand out. Number two is to set your aperture to be just not too wide open. I would recommend maybe anything uh, above f5.6. This just helps keep your focus area a little wider so that no parts of the liquid or anything moving ends up being out of focus. Number three is that I recommend pouring towards your light source, but at the same time, experiment with different angles, different lighting positions, and see what looks cool to you. If you end up trying this out and you get some results that you're really excited about, be sure to post a few on your Instagram and tag me at Cocktail Camera. I'd love to check it out.